how to add animations in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal. And actually, to add an animation into the level sequence, we need to go through a few steps. We have to first add an animation track to the actor we want to animate. Then we have to add the animation section into that animation track. And finally, we have to place that animation section where we want to animate the unit. So decide the start frame and the end frame. And we're going to go through all those steps today. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 22 of the series. So I recommend to go see that one. But if you don't want to, here is what the code looks like. So as usual, either file completely empty except the function we're going to create today so the add animation in level sequence function this function is going to take an actor as input so the actor in your level sequence onto which you want to add the animation and then we have the path of the level sequence in which the actor should be and you want to add the animation so the level sequence path then we have the path of the animation file you want to apply to the actor so that's the animation path that we have right here and finally we have two integer to set the start frame and the end frame of your animation in the level sequence so do you want your animation to start at frame 10, 20, 30, and same thing, where do you want your animation to end? So frame 90, 80, 75, doesn't really matter, it's your choice. So that's pretty much it for the header file, this is the function we're going to add today, so now it's time to jump in the CPP, and we're gonna start with the includes as usual. The first include is going to be the code of the video 22 of the series, that code we're going to use it to retrieve the actor that is currently inside the level sequence, because we receive an actor right here as input, and we have to find the UID of that actor to be able to add something onto to it, to add a new track, to add a new animation, or to do anything with it, we need the UID. So we're gonna use the code from the video 22 to find that UID. And then we have all the other includes we're going to use today. So we need the level sequence, obviously, because we want to modify the level sequence. And we also need the movie scene, which is inside the level sequence, because that's going to affect both of those. So we need the level sequence and the movie scene, as usual. And inside that movie scene, we're going to add an animation track. So we have to include the skeletal animation track right here. And inside that animation track, we want to add the animation section. So that's why right here we need to include the movie scene section and all those four includes are in different modules So we have the level sequence movie scene and movie scene tracks module So we have to make sure that these three modules are already inside the build.cs file Otherwise it will not compile. So let's go in the build.cs file. I have my level sequence right here I have my movie scene right here because I already used them in a previous video But I don't have the movie scene track So I'm just going to add my movie scene track right here Just make sure that you have all these three otherwise it will not compile So I have all my three modules right Right here and now it's time to jump back in the cpp to focus on the function so the add animation in level sequence function and as usual we're going to start by validating what we receive as input so the path of the animation and the level sequence and the actor so first thing we're going to start with the animation path we're going to try to load the animation we're trying to apply to the actor because if the animation is not valid we're not going to be able to apply it to that actor obviously so here i'm just going to do a static load object using the uanim sequence class so we're going to try to load an anim sequence uh, using the path we receive as input so at that location we're going to load an animation sequence and that's going to give us the animation we want to apply to the actor if that animation is null it means that well the animation is not valid so we're not going to be able to apply it to the actor so i can just return right here saying that it was a fail because the animation is not valid i'm not going to be able to add it inside the level sequence obviously but if the animation is valid we can now try to add it onto the actor but to do that we have to find the actor inside the level sequence because we assume that we already have an actor somewhere in the level sequence onto which we want to apply the animation so we're just going to try to find it so using the code from the video 22 i'm just going to do a get actor uid from level sequence providing it the actor and the level sequence in which the actor should be and that function should return me the uid of that actor so if the actor is already inside the level sequence we're going to have the uid and we're going to use that uid to apply the animation track right here i'm just going to make sure that my uid is valid because if it's not valid it means that the actor is not inside the level sequence so i cannot add any animation onto it because i don't have an actor inside my level sequence but good now we know that we have a valid animation and a valid actor now we just have to load the level sequence also because we want to modify the level sequence so i'm just going to use the path i receive as input to load my level sequence using a static load object as usual i have my level sequence right here and now it's time to start doing the work and the first step is to add the animation track on top of the actor so that's what we're going to do right here i'm going to start by trying to find the animation track maybe it's already there maybe you already added an animation track on top of your actor so you just want to reuse that same animation track you cannot add multiple animations animation tracks on top of the actor it's just one animation track that contains multiple animation sections so if the track is already there well you're just going to reuse the same one you're not going to create a new one so right here i'm just going to ask my movie scene to find the track the track type is going to be the u movie scene skeletal animation track which is the animation track and the actor that might have that track onto it it's the actor with the uid that we just found right here so we have the uid we're going to ask the movie
movie scene if that UID has a movie scene skeletal animation track which is going to give us the animation track in which we want to add our animation section but in the case that you didn't create an animation track quite yet you don't have an animation track on your third that is inside the level sequence then in that case that track is going to be invalid because the track is not there and we want to create a new one and that's what we're going to do we're just going to ask the movie scene to add a new track using the same class that we were looking for obviously because we want to obviously add an animation track so we're just going to use the same class right here so the U movie scene skeletal animation track and using the same UID because we want to add the track on the same actor yeah that just makes sense so good now we should have added a new animation track and our animation track variable should be valid right here but what if it's not well I'm just going to return right away because I was not able to create my animation track I don't know why that could happen but if it does well I'm just going to return saying that it was a fail like giving a little bit more information and then you can look into that a little bit deeper because you'll know that you were not able to create the animation track for any random reason good so now we have a valid animation track in which we want to add the animation section so I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit right here and to add the animation section well we have to first start by calculating where we want to place the animation section inside the level sequence inside the track in the level sequence and I'm saying calculating because the way the sequencer work it's actually not using frames it's using ticks and the value of these ticks are actually variable yeah that doesn't help because well in your level sequence you can modify the tick resolution so how many ticks you want to have per frame so you can modify that value that's that's a possibility and you can also modify the display rate of your level sequence so do you want it to play at 60 fps 30 fps 75 fps random fps numbers you can modify that value also so based on how many ticks you want to apply per frame and also the frame rate of your level sequence that tick value is going to be different and that's why right here i'm calculating the frame tick value so how many ticks is a frame worth so let's say for example a frame is worth 100 ticks that means that if you want to place the animation at the frame 4 in your level sequence you need to place it at the tick 400 because every frame is worth 100 ticks and yeah that's a little bit confusing but as long as you know this formula right here to be able to generate how many ticks is inside every frame then it's super simple you just have to multiply that value right here by the amount of frame you want to use so if you want to start at frame 10 you just multiply 10 by this number and that should work and that's what we're going to do actually we're just going to add the animation section so the anim track that we have right here the valid anim track we're going to ask it to add a new animation section and then we have to feed it the animation that's the second parameter right Right here but we also have to feed it the start frame number which is actually the start tick of the animation in the level sequence so to generate that tick number we're just going to multiply the start frame which is where you want to place the animation in the level sequence multiplied by the value of the frames which will give you the right frame number which is the right tick where to place the animation in the level sequence so on the animation track you're adding a new animation and this is the tick number where you want to start playing the animation and then you have the animation you want to assign to that animation section that's going to give you the animation section if the animation section was not able to be created for any random reason right here i'm just going to return right away saying that well i was not able to create my animation section for some random reason and then you can start investigating from there to see what the problem is because well i don't really know because that never happened to me so yeah maybe there's a reason why the animation section cannot be created but i don't really know why that could happen so anyway now we have a valid animation section and the last thing we have to do is to set its end frame because right here we're setting the start frame only we're not setting the end frame so here I'm just going to set the end frame of my section so on the section I'm doing a set end frame same thing it's in ticks so we have to calculate the frame number which is the end tick of our section so here I'm just going to multiply the end frame by the frame tick value and then that's going to give us the tick where you want the animation to end in the animation track but here you can see that I'm only doing that if the end frame is bigger than my start frame because that just makes sense you cannot really place the end frame before the start frame so I'm just going to add a little check right here to make sure that my end frame is greater than my start frame just so we're not asking the section to do something that doesn't make sense so good the section's there the end frame is placed properly we just have to tell the anim track to refresh itself because well you have to call the modify function just to let it know that we did something so we added a new track we changed something in the track we changed something in the sections that are inside the track so we're just going to call the modify function that's going to save the anim track that's going to tell it hey something changed you have to refresh yourself you have to make sure to save all the data and that's it now we're done everything should be set up properly so we can say that it was a success we were able to add the animation
information onto the actor that is inside the level sequence and now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So here I am in Unreal with a pretty empty level, with a pretty empty level sequence. The only thing that I have is my warrior right here, my skeletal mesh warrior that is inside my level. I also placed it inside my level sequence and we're going to add animations on top of that warrior right here. And the animations we're going to use are the animations that I have right here. So my idle animation and walk animation. So we're going to set those two animations onto my warrior to see that we're able to add multiple animations on top of the same unit. And the way we're going to do that is as usual using a user interface. So here I can provide the path of the level sequence I want to modify, which is the level sequence I just showed you. Then we can decide which animation we want to apply to the unit. So I have my animation warrior idol right here as default. And then I can decide my start frame and end frame. And when I click on the add animation button, it should call the add animation in level sequence function that I have right here, which is the function we just created. For the actor, I'm getting the first skeletal mesh actor that is inside my level, because in my case, I only have one skeletal mesh in my level, which is my warrior skeletal mesh. If you have multiple skeletal mesh in your level, you can obviously find another way to decide onto which skeletal mesh you want to apply the animation but in my case I just have that one so I'm just going to use the get actor of class to keep it simple and then for the level sequence path I'm using the path of the level sequence the animation same thing the path of the animation and then for the start and end frame I'm going to use the values that are inside the spin boxes and now it's time to see if it works so I'm gonna go right here run my editor utility widget that I have right here scroll all the way at the bottom and by default I'm just going to add my idle animation on top of my warrior so add animation and we can see that it worked it added a new animation track and the new animation section the animation section starts at the frame 10 like it's written in my user interface and ends at the frame 20 like it's written in my user interface also so I have my new animation section right here what if I try to add another one so let's say from the frame 26 to 33 here we go I'm adding a new animation section that I have right here right afterwards and if you're using the same frames that are already occupied by some animation section Unreal is going to be smart and add it into another layer so you have different layers of animation section you have this one right here that one right here and you can have as many layers as you want depending on how many animation section you want to have on top of the other obviously so here I have a bunch of animation idle at the beginning of my level sequence now let's try to add another animation inside the level sequence so let's say my walk animation I'm going to add it a little bit later so from frame 36 to 66 here we go I have my animation walk right here so if I scrub right here my unit is in idle uh, then my unit is going to be walking here we go and then you can add after let's say the walk you can put it back to idle so I can try to add my idle animation right here right afterwards so now the unit is idle it's going to walk a little bit and then it's going to go back in idle obviously my frame numbers don't really make sense right now you can obviously set frame numbers that make more sense than mine so okay we can see that it works pretty well the other things I wanted to show you let's say I'm going to delete everything so remove all the animation we can remove the track also it doesn't really matter we can see that my level sequence is at 30 fps right now so if I place an animation from let's say the frame 0 to frame 100 it should actually let's say 10 to 100 if, if I had my animation right here it should start at the frame 10 and end at the frame 100 but what if you change the fps of your level sequence so let's say i'm going to place it to 250 now we can see that my frame numbers are completely different i have way more frame than before because now my level sequence runs at 250 fps which is way more than before so now if i add an animation right here between the same frame so 10 and 100 we can see that it appeared right here at the beginning from the frame 10 the new frame 10 because you changed the fps and all the way to the end of the frame 100 which is right Right here at the beginning of the level sequence because now I have way more frame than before so we can see that the math that we added inside the function to be able to make sure that the frames matches the frames that are written inside the level sequence are working the maths are working because even though my fps changed i was able to place my animation between the frame 10 and the frame 100 which is now at the beginning of the level sequence and same thing if i do the opposite if i slow down my fps now if i add my animation it's going to go way past the end of my animation because the frame 100 is now all the way there so yeah i don't recommend changing the fps while placing tracks inside the level sequence that just doesn't make sense but just know that if you do it well this function is still gonna work using the frame numbers that you provided so yeah i guess that's gonna conclude today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye-bye.